I like playing end games. I won lots of points in the end games over the last few years. When I was little, I used to lose points in the end game, but then I learned, and eventually I'm becoming the one who who gains half points, whether it be drawn games um, won or sometimes even lost games drawn. Um, and one of my favorite themes in the end game is uh, rook. Uh, when the rook is in, on the wrong side of of the pass pawn, somehow that has in rook end games that somehow that has always fascinated me. And main reason for that is the game I'm going to show you right now. Uh, my game against uh, the Czech grandmaster uh, Racek uh, in the in the German Bundesliga in 2000. Seven. So, if we were to switch around the positions of um, of uh, the rooks um, here, uh, let's just uh, you know put um, put the um, the white rook on b two and the black rook on b eight. Uh, the position would be an easy win for. For white, um, since the black rook is completely um, uh, immobile, and uh, we can just march over it with the king. Uh, obviously, with um, with uh, the rooks uh, in the uh, in the places that they actually are, um, this is uh, not uh, this is not possible uh, because then the the white king will simply be uh, be checked. So something more clever is um, is needed, and uh, I um, I really I uh, like the idea that, hap that happened in the game. So here I played the king to d6. Uh, obviously, black needs to um, protect uh, the e5 pawn. O otherwise, this cluster of pawns will uh, quickly become uh, pretty mobile. So he protected it with the, with the king. It should be noted that if he protects um, the, uh, the pawn with, uh, with the f-pawn, I, I will simply play um, uh, rook to e8, uh, rook takes b7, rook to e7, rook takes, king takes, with, with an easily winning pawn, pawn end game. Um, for instance, king to g6, king to f8, there is nothing to do except push the pawn. Uh, takes g4, if the king moves backwards, I just go king to g8, forces king away again and then grab the pawn so he has to go forward, but then uh, once again he's not in time and now it's important just to play king to f5 rather than capture any of the pawns and wherever he goes I capture the, the pawn the same way as, as the black king goes. So, um, so he played king f6 instead which is, the, uh, which is the only chance. And now quite a bit of imagination is required to, uh, to win the game. Um, obviously rook h8 Rook takes b7, rook h6, king g7 is not enough because I need to move the rook, I cannot take this pawn and my extra pawn would be basically meaningless. So instead, already a long time ago I had found this idea, but obviously I needed to, to ver verify whether it actually worked. So I played f4 uh, and um, I remember one of my teammates, Peter Swidler, he told me after the game he didn't know what I was doing, whether I was trying to, to lose the game, but then, yeah, then when he saw my idea, he sort of calmed down, so he has no choice um, but to, to take it twice. And now comes the point of my idea, rook to, to g8. Uh, and uh, obviously with the point rook b7, e5 and uh, and checkmate. So he has only one option which is rook uh, to b6, rook takes b7, king takes b7. 
and now f3. There are a couple of ways for white to win here, but by far the most elegant, I think, was the way that I chose, which is the same idea again. King to c6, and if he advances with the pawn, king to d6. And uh, once again, uh, is, is, is checkmate. <laughs> so uh, uh, instead he, uh, he chose king to, uh, to e5, but now e8, king f4, king d5, and rook, on f, rook to f8 on the next move. Um, it's, uh, it's completely lost. I guess it is quite a bit better to have the rook behind the, 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 the passed pawn than in front of it. But this game goes to show that there are many resources and that even in simple endgames it's often possible to, to play for a mate. And um, that is one of the fascinating things really about, about endgames. And every time I have the possibility since uh, to get the rook in front, I'm always looking for uh, getting the rook in front of the pawn and trying some uh, some themes like this because um, the nice thing about the having 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 the rook in front of the pawn is that the 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 opponent's rook can never can never move away from that particular uh, file uh, because then uh, the rook will move away and the pawn promotes so um, it increases, uh, it decreases your options, but also decreases your opponent's options. So remember always to, to look for, for checkmate, even in IDMs.